Welcome to China Money Podcast, your source for local knowledge and insights on investing in China. Go to our website, ChinaMoneyPodcast.com, for more great episodes. I'm your host, Nina Xiang. Our guest today is Ludwig Nielsen, co-founder and managing director at Jade Invest, a fund of funds focused on China based in Shanghai. He's talking to me today at 3 on the Bound in Shanghai. Hi, Ludwig. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Late last year, you described China's private equity industry as a hyped market with strong fundamentals. Have you changed your opinion? Uh, not really. I think uh, the hype is still on. Um, the inflow of new capital into China is still actually increasing, if anything. Um, not just from the traditional sources, from overseas investors from across the world, uh, but also uh, we see now an increasing influx actually of local uh, capital into the private equity market, specifically from insurance companies. You are a fund of funds in China. With China's private equity industry facing the wave of consolidation, have you changed your strategy in selecting funds? Yes, we have. So, uh, the way we've adjusted our strategy in this cycle is that we are focusing more on what we call re resource-heavy managers, so managers with strong connections in the political and financial system in China that can help companies navigate the way to an IPO and to, uh, to other significant developments. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that we've, because what we have now is a hype market. Uh, in such a hype market condition, you need to focus more on fundamentals. And the fundamental in this industry overall is alignment of interest. So we want the fund manager to co-invest properly um, into their own fund not just the traditional private equity 1%, 2%, and you know, yet a, a huge kind of option value on the carry. Um, what we see as the only way to get people to take you know, a reasonable risk return kind of uh, valuation in, in, into account when they look at deals is to basically look at, uh, at co-investment percentages of over 10%. So many of the fund managers that we work with co-invest 10 to 20% of their own fund, which is a huge amount compared to anywhere in the West. Is there any particular industry or strategy that you see that represents better opportunities right now? We look at a number of sectors. We look at industry sectors, we look at geographic sectors, and, 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 and for example, on the geographic side, we've actually spent a lot of time uh, and effort on, and, and, and money, I should say, uh, in the Western China regions. So, um, given the new development phase that the Western China region is going into at the moment, we see a lot of opportunity of investing there now, a little bit ahead of the curve in, in private equity terms. Um, so some of the managers that you have over there tend to have very strong local connections, very good deal flow, uh, and, and very good understanding of the risks in um, operating in that area. And they have been able to do deals at uh, extremely attractive valuations in, in, in comparatively speaking, very good companies too. Um, so I think it's always about finding an area which is fundamentally attractive where competition is still benign or limited. But when you go to a frontier market, you might face unique challenges relating to that. For example, you might not know uh, the local business and political environment. How do you manage risks like that? I think, I think the fundamental issue here is also about the reason why we tend to favor local funds. Um, you know, we started favoring local funds in China, uh, you know, single country funds in China 2004 and 5. And at that time, most people were still investing on a pan-Asian basis. At this moment, uh, you know, if you go into Western China, the reason why we want to work with local funds over there too is that they know how to manage those risks. If you're taking a fund from Shanghai, let's say, who's going in there, they are almost as foreign as I am going there. Right? Uh, I mean, I've lived in China for a long time, so many of those local risks can actually best be managed by people who have those local connections. Thank you so much, Ludwig. Oh, thank you so much for having me. That's today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Go to our website, chinamoneypodcast.com, like our Facebook page, or follow us on Twitter. Thank you so much. Until next time.